Hello everybody, I'm Mark and today I got 5 more very useful tips for Affinity Designer. This is part 2 in this series, so don't forget to check up the first video, I will drop the link in the first comment below. If you like my tips and tricks, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel or even share this video to somebody that may benefit from it. Alright, let's get started. My first trick for today, it's all about creating new color palette from one selected color. So let's say you got one color that you want to use for your project, the main color. It's here. Let's add a brand new palette to my document. So I will add a new blank palette. Nothing's here. Now I'm going to add this color as my swatch. And now just right click on it, simply right click on it and you will have option to generate different palettes from it based of what you need. So let's explore some options here. All right, let's click this one and it will generate a palette based on property I select. Try again and this time triad maybe and we got even more colors so you can generate a big palette of swatches from just one color by simply right clicking on it and then selecting what kind of palette you want to generate so that's really handy all right you can do it directly from the software you don't need to go to any outside websites the tip number two for today's video is blending gradients so we can actually apply two gradients into one shape take a look on this gradient it's unusual it's go from the top to the bottom so we go from violet to blue but also you can see this blue on the left is more like green so we got like two dimensional gradient here how can we do that let me show you here's the basic shape now the gradient tool cool and now if you check out the gradient here at the top you can modify the base color we got two colors so far you can even add a little bit of noise so that's very basic use of gradient but now using this this panel over here appearance we can add additional fill to the same shape with that you can add one more gradient above the existing one and simply while you're setting up your colors for the second gradient, the one above, you will need to reduce opacity slightly so you can also see the gradient below. This way you can kind of blend two gradients just inside one shape. You see I'm reducing opacity now and I can see the gradient below. This way you can have a unique effect by blending two or even three gradients together with different colors, different directions, even different type of gradients. All right, so tip number two was to blend a gradients together into one shape. Let's move to the next tip, tip number three. So the tip number three for today's video is all about embedded objects. So this is very similar to smart objects or smart layers in Photoshop. I simply drag and drop other file. This was file in Save It Affinity Designer format. And I drag and drop it. If I double click on this file, I will get a new file in a new window here. So I can make changes to this original Affinity Designer file. Let's change the text in it to my name. I will reposition this to the center. And if I go back to my project I see that it's already updated here so you kind of have a container a box you got file inside the file if you make a duplicate of this layer like this and let's use this duplicate of some kind of a reflection maybe I will just flip it like this reduce opacity and we can also apply a layer style on the on the previous one so we can override the colors gradient or with just solid color here all right so i override the original color using layer styles this is still embedded object so this is actually another affinity designer document here inside so if i go back to that embedded document here 
and if I make changes right now, let's change my name to hello. I go back here and as you can see, it's updated in both cases, in the original one and also a duplicate. So that's really, really handy. It's allow you to make those editable effects also very handy when designing mockups. All right, my tip number four is super simple and easy. Color picker, the one next to your color wheel at the top right corner, this one can actually pick colors from the program but also from outside. So take a look, I can pick the color of my wallpaper here in my Mac OS. And here it is, you don't need to drag all documents, all pictures into your, into your project. You can actually open them and then use color picker to pick some colors from other pictures without importing them. And the last tip for today is to use child layers. As you can see, I got a child layer here, this little rectangle. And if even I move it outside, I cannot see it because it's a child. So it's automatically cropped to the parent layer. That's super handy when you want to apply some kind of brushing or textures. So let me just show you how to put it in. You must hover your layer here and move it to the right. So it's not directly below, but a little bit to the right. This way you indicate that this layer will be a child layer for the layer above. So let's try to search for some texture. Hmm, all right, maybe this will do. Let's load it directly from the program by just dragging and dropping. All right, and now I will draw a shape. That will I will use that shape as a parent for this texture. So this is definitely too big right now. Let's downsize this image and draw additional shape. Let's start with rectangle tool, maybe round a corner here, add a little bit of rotation to it. So we got some unusual shape. All right, so we got shape like this and now you wanna put this texture inside, simply drag it inside as a child layer. So this shape will crop it. When it's inside, you can also play and modify the blending mode or even opacity of this texture to blend it better with the parent layer like this. So that's really handy because you don't need to worry about cropping or geometry tool because the parent layer will always crop the child layer below. All right, that was the last trip tip for today. Child layers, we talk about color picker outside of Infinity Designer. We talk about embedded documents, about gradient blending and also about making color palette just from single color. I hope you found some of those tips useful and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.